Do you memorise your lesson plans for piano lessons or music classes? When Doremi members start to use my detailed lesson plans, a frequently asked question is how do you remember what to do? It made me realise that so many of us feel we need to memorise our lesson plans and I reflected on my own journey and hang-ups and misconceptions about memorisation. So in this week's podcast, I share those reflections and why memorising your lesson plan isn't necessarily desirable or achievable. When I started teaching music, piano specifically, I didn't really have a lesson plan. I, like many new teachers, used my method book religiously and whatever the book presented on the next page was the thing we'd learn next. And that's pretty embarrassing to admit looking back now. But obviously, as I developed as a teacher and identified other activities to include, I started to plan a little more. Keeping notes on what we'd done and what I wanted to cover next that wasn't already sat on the page of the book. Fast forward and my lessons became more and more complex and as you know I ditched the method books and created my own Kodai based curriculum and never looked back. The trouble is I had this hang up about how to present myself in the lesson. I felt I had to look like I knew it all. If I had to look at anything other than the student or their lesson book or their notebook then it made me feel like I didn't know what I was doing and I also worried it would break the flow of the lesson and make me stumble or lose their attention. It was a sign I was incompetent or unprofessional. And even worse, when I returned to the classroom I felt the same. I thought I needed to memorise my lesson plans and it was super stressful. Even though I hadn't felt that way years earlier when I started my teaching career in the classroom? Was it something that grew from the piano lesson atmosphere and culture? I mean, when I watch demonstration lessons from guru teachers online, in piano lessons or in classroom music lessons, I don't see them looking at their notes. But I guess we also only see a snapshot of their working week. Because here's the problem. There have been times when I've had over 40 students a week. Most of them start in September and for those first years I'm teaching very similar lessons. Right from the start they do diverge a little and sometimes a lot so they aren't identical lessons. It would be easier but far less rewarding if they were. After all one of the things I love most about one-to-one teaching is that lessons can be tailored to the individual student and I can meet their needs. Even if I could memorise a single lesson plan I certainly can't memorise all the tweaks and variations for each child. And since teaching using the Kodai approach, these lesson plans are complex. For Do Re Mi Teach Piano and Do Re Mi Teach Music, we have seven, eight, nine different activities within a single lesson. And because I break down each activity into microsteps and then deliver one microstep per lesson, there are many different threads running in parallel. So it would be really easy to miss out one or join two together, or more likely, teach Ellie's next microstep to Archie. The Do Re Mi Teach curriculums are at the same time super simple and super complex and that's why they're so effective. We only want to give them a tiny micro step of knowledge at a time but because we can run different threads in parallel we can actually deliver multiple micro steps each week. Let me explain, it's getting a bit complicated now. Okay, here's a lesson I taught yesterday to Harry. So we're working on the following threads in parallel. We're preparing triple meter, we're practicing phrasing, we're practicing letter names, we're developing part work, we're practicing our new note do, we're preparing our next note re, and we're growing our repertoire bank. So that's seven different threads in parallel. And for each of those seven threads, we're taking one tiny micro step along their paths. So for triple meter, we're unconsciously experiencing three in a bar with a clapping game that goes with the song Bells in the Steeple. For phrasing, we're listening to a 12-bar blues recording and doing a dance that breaks into eight-beat phrases, again, unconsciously for now. We'll be reusing this activity later on in the term to practice our letter names. But for now, for our letter names thread, we've already found all the Fs, all the Gs, and today we worked out how to find all the Cs. We've been working on ostinatos to develop two-part hearing Today our focus song on the piano was Apple Tree and instead of singing or signing the ostinato, which we've been doing over the last few weeks, we played it as a duet and Harry absolutely loved it. Of course, Apple Tree contains our recent new note, Do, so we're practicing that, but we also played around with So Me Do triads using Double Double. That's going to be our focus song next week. 
And our next new note will be re. So we've already discovered that we need a new note for hot cross buns. And today we worked out that it's a step between me and do. And of course, every lesson we're growing our repertoire bank for future focuses. And today I sang him Peter Taps for the first time. And we played a beat game with our one, two, three, four, and five imaginary hammers. Can you imagine memorizing all that? I certainly can't. And sure, as I teach a particular lesson a number of times, we'll need to look at the plan less and less, just glance at the headings, which is why the format and the layout of your lesson plan is so important. But blimey, I'd struggle to memorise it as a single lesson, let alone one of 11 lessons that day. So I don't. I either print out my one-page lesson plan, and Do Re Mi members will know that the lesson plans I share with my members are always one page. I can't be doing with multiple pages. If more information is needed to understand what to do, that can be found in the video walkthroughs of each lesson or the transcripts of the videos. Because it's one page, it will also sit nicely on my iPad if that's what I'm using today. Or my favourite, because it's so versatile, is my laptop. I take my laptop to my studio or to school and it sits on the side by the piano or on the table or on the floor or wherever it needs to go so that I can glance at it without breaking the atmosphere of the lesson. Why did I think it was unprofessional to have a script? Why did I think I needed to pretend I had it all in my head? Once I stopped being embarrassed about needing a script, I embraced it. Before a student comes in, I know the opening warm-up activity I'm going to do and which piece they're going to review from last week. So we can start the lesson with some momentum. But embracing your lesson plan includes not hiding it. When we tell a student that we have planned a lesson for them, why would they feel anything negative? They will feel valued that you took the time to create something just for them. They will feel confident and secure that you have a plan for their progress and success and they will feel excited about what you have in store for them. What are we doing today, Mrs. Russell? Don't they always ask that? They don't want you to be winging it. So why do we feel like we need to look like we are? What do you think? Do you memorise your lesson plans? Could your lesson plans be more effective if you didn't feel under pressure to memorise them? Give me a shout on helen at doremeconnect.co.uk or on social media, I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to see my lesson plans for teaching piano or classroom music using the Kodai approach, then you need to check out Do Re Mi membership. Do Re Mi members get access to my classroom music curriculum, including video walkthroughs, downloadable lesson plans and resources, and access to my live coaching and Q&A calls and online community. If it's piano you're after, you can become a Do Re Mi Teach Piano member and get all of that plus my Do Re Mi Teach Piano curriculum. Again, lesson plans, resources and walkthroughs. There are teachers just like you already in the community ready to support you and share your questions, successes and stories. So come and join us at doremiconnect.co.uk forward slash music or if you're a piano teacher, doremiconnect.co.uk forward slash piano.